you said that there's an influx or perhaps even a doubling of Christian, or maybe even Messianic Jewish involvement in the IDF. Are you able to sort of comment on that more? Like why, why is that happening? Uh, Messianic Jewish involvement in IDF is compulsory. As Jews, they have to serve, Jews, so yeah. the, the, there's no change there. So these are Christians from outside but the Arab, of Israel? No, no, not from outside. I mean, the Arab Christians of Israel, Arabs in general are not required to serve in the IDF. Yeah. You know, only Jews are. But Arabs are able to volunteer, and many do. And over the course of the past few years, the older generation of Arab Christians are by and large encouraging the younger generation to enlist and to volunteer in larger numbers because they see what's going on in the region around them and they realize there is no safe place in the Middle East for them but Israel. So better to become a more integrated part of Israel than to stay on the outside even though they're inside. Yeah, um, some Jews would say that, especially I think perhaps the ultra-Orthodox Jews, um, a lot of them resist the conscription policy is, you know, as Christians, do we say, well, you know, was, did that take place in the, the Old Testament? How do we bring that into today? Like, should Israel have conscription or not? Whether or not people in the Old Testament were conscripted or not, I yeah. mean, I'm not sure. I mean, you, you see the kings of Israel going out to war. I don't know if they required their people to fight or, or people volunteered. Okay. But, um, I mean, the fact of the matter for Israel, you know, the Bible itself aside even is that there's no choice but for every citizen, at least every Jewish citizen, to join the military. Otherwise, there's no, there's no defense. Um, again, you're talking about an ultra-Orthodox segment that by and large rejects the state of Israel itself, even though it happily takes the, the money that the state of Israel gives them for their schools and everything else. But they reject the idea of the state of Israel itself because it wasn't established by, by Messiah. And right. so obviously they reject um, serving in the military. And, and those who are less hostile to the state will still argue that, well, our being in the yeshiva and praying is just as important as the soldier who goes out on the battlefield, so we're not going to go out on the battlefield. And the, the, the facts of the case are that when Israel was established, Ben-Gurion made a, a deal with the leading rabbis, with the chief rabbis, that a, a, a certain small number of yeshiva students would be exempted from military service because, you know, as these guys mentioned, even the secular atheist leaders of the Zionist movement at the time, like Ben Gurion, although I would argue whether he was atheist or not, yeah. they still recognized the value of prayer. So they exempted a small number of yeshiva students to, instead of joining the army, they would stay in the yeshiva and pray. Because even he said that was just as important as fighting. But it was, it was supposed to always remain a small number. Over the years, the uh, Orthodox leadership has said, okay, well, now it extends to all yeshiva students. And Israel hasn't fought back because they don't want to make angry that large segment of the population.